woodcraft, helping you make wood work. We're good? Everybody's here? Excellent. Welcome to Woodcraft, our weekend woodworks demo. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about wood patinas. Uh, this all came about for a project I've been working on uh, to age pine, um, short of sticking it outside for a long time. Most of what I was using on this project actually came out of one of those piles of, it was all gray and weathered. I had to plane it down, get it to where I needed to. Um, and it ended up nice and shiny like this piece here. So I've got a few products here. Uh, the first one that I went with uh, in my search for how do I do this without sticking it outside was a mixture of vinegar and in this case steel wool. Uh, this is a piece that I had soaking uh, in one of these solutions. Uh, you could get away with nails, steel, scrap would probably work. I happen to have steel wool sitting around for other things that I do. Uh, there's lots of air space in there for everything to, I guess, oxidize. Uh, so I use the steel wool. I have two solutions here. This is the first one I mixed up. Uh, I did about a quart of vinegar, um, just plain white distilled vinegar. Whatever it's 5% acidity works just fine. I read a lot of stuff about spending money on the more expensive, uh, higher acid content. Doesn't seem to be necessary. This is a nice rusty color. I left the steel wool in here uh, until it was completely dissolved. And this will actually make a darker patina with one coat uh, than this one, which was, uh, ended up being, I think it did a, a pint on this one uh, with a wad of steel wool, 12 hours, uh, 12 hours minimum, uh, and you get a pretty decent solution here. Now I'm just gonna keep this in a bag. I had a question just before we started about uh, aging metal. I've uh, been aging some brass. I threw a piece of brass in here and it does a nice patina on it as well with that dissimilar metal and the acid in there, nice corrosion on there. Um, so I started out with pine and I'm going to go ahead and show you on the back here. I'm going to do one coat of the completely dissolved real high strength solution and then the 12 hour solution. Unfortunately, um, it didn't turn gray. So we'll see here in just a moment. And I've got gloves on, and this is just vinegar. It's not going to be that big of a deal for you. Uh, but I'd rather I didn't smell like it here. So I'm going to do this one first. This is just the 12 hour solution. And paint that on there. And then on this other side, I'm going to put my really rusty stuff. Now these are hand plane surfaces, water doesn't absorb so well into a hand plane surface or at least as well as it does into a sanded surface. Uh, most of these pieces are hand planed, uh, so the water kind of sits on top or whatever you put on there, sits on top more than it absorbs into it. But we're going to let that sit and do its saying. You notice that it's not necessarily going to turn gray, and you watch, it's probably going to turn gray this time. Uh, it turns more of a ruddy brown which was fine. Uh, I liked, I did some other tests on it. I really liked the way it looked, but it wasn't that barn wood, you know, old out in the weather kind of look that everybody was going for. Um, so I decided at that point, although I was just, well, I close these up. Uh, although I was just doing pine project, I grabbed some other wood uh, and I've done tests on those. And I'm gonna go ahead and do some tests now. Uh, it's just some plain maple. So we'll go back on here and do half of this with that and the other half with that. And you can kind of see what goes on. So maple. Walnut, I found that this stuff turns it almost black, which is pretty cool if you're looking for kind of an alternative to, uh, to ebony here. And I know I'm mixing a little bit, it honestly it doesn't bother me that I'm mixing them. Um, I ended up on a lot of the projects I was working on doing multiple coats. And so you let it dry, see where it is, and then do another coat if you want it darker. Uh, there is one step after they dry on here. 
so we'll keep going here. Uh, this is some red oak, and most of these are the more common woods that people use in their projects. So some red oak here. And then this last piece, it's a piece of cherry I grabbed this morning. Now this one's sanded, it's not planed, uh, but we'll go ahead and do this on here. This is cherry. Now this was really surprising. Uh, my first attempt at cherry actually turned it black after several coats, uh, which was pretty cool. It left the pores of the wood. You could still see the cherry color in there, which was pretty awesome. Uh, you do want to make sure that you get a complete coverage, even coverage on here, or you can get some discoloration. So we'll kind of let those dry. You can see here, pine's not really gray which was disappointing when I first did this. But the maple, it turns gray right away, which is pretty cool. So if you really want that weathered look, um, granted these are still wet. You can see some drips on the side here. It's turning this stuff almost black. You do this uh, walnut. Uh, you could do more layers and get it really, really black. Here is, as we go along here, the red oak. That is turning a nice gray color. And then the cherry is darkening up nicely too. Uh, there are some other chemicals available. If you're not necessarily looking for the aged weathered look, just, you know, old cherry gets nice dark red um, over time. There are some other chemicals available. I don't know what they are off the top of my head. Uh, they work with mahogany and, and things like that that darken nice reddish hues over time, dark browns. Um, if you're not looking to stain your wood and you just want that natural age to look on there. Okay, uh, so I came to Nick and I was told him I was doing and I had several months ago, I think it was, I had a bunch of these samples that I brought in. I had some, uh, some finish on them to see how they would look, just some oil finish. And so Nick came and he had this stuff. Got a sample, it's Pioneer Wood or pioneer-wood.com. Uh, we should be able, if you guys are uh, interested in this, get this stuff in. This, uh, this one makes a gallon. I didn't mix up an entire gallon. I just mixed up a pint of it. So it was two cups of water and about a half a teaspoon of this stuff. Uh, they say it's perfectly safe, water soluble. Doesn't matter what the temperature is. Mix it up, let it sit for five minutes before you use it. And it has a minimum mixed shelf life of five years. So it should last a while. If you mix up a gallon, you're gonna have it for at least five years. Uh, I don't know what it is chemical wise. They say don't breathe it in, don't wanna ingest it. Um, and it stains, stains hands, clothing, anything else to get on it. So I'm wearing, being as careful as I can and I'm wearing my gloves today. Um, other than that, it's not a terrible stuff. Um, several days ago, I did a control piece as a piece of pine. I did this with this uh, uh, Pioneer wood and I did my project that I'm working on with this. And this was left in my shop, my other project I put outside. Uh, it is darker than this. I have not tried it on anything else. So this is gonna be the first time today we're gonna try it on the cherry and the walnut and the maple um, and the red oak here. But the directions, the only thing it has other than painting it on there and let it dry is for pine. And they say it needs to be left outside to mature the patina. Uh, it will get darker. I do suggest um, to do your lumber beforehand. Uh, maybe if you're gonna mill it down and get it close to what you want, paint it on there, put it outside for a while. Um, I know you can just stick pine outside and eventually you'll turn that nice gray weathered. This stuff accelerates it. So I did a test piece or control piece and I put this in my shop and I just let it sit there. And it is not as dark as my other project. Um, so in a moment here, we're gonna flip these over and I'm gonna try this stuff, uh, the Pioneer wood on the other side. I'm not gonna do the pine because it takes some time, but I'll do the rest and we'll kind of see firsthand what it's gonna do uh, to the rest of these woods as they, like I said, they don't have specific instructions for, for these other woods here. <clears throat> these up. I'm sorry? Have I tried it on cedar? I have not tried it on cedar yet. I'm sure it'd be similar to pine, uh, though I have not tried it. 
I tried to grab some more common woods that were used. I didn't have any extra cedar sitting around. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and kind of just sponge these off real quick, dry them off. Um, you'll know that, uh, notice that when they are dry, they'll actually get a little bit of...